Chapter Twenty of the Mikado Jewel by Fergus Hume. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter Twenty, A Further Explanation. The morning dawned raw and bleak to display the scene of the disaster in its most searching light. None of those who had come to the entertainment were allowed to go on shore during the hours of darkness basil indeed as soon as akira informed him of the catastrophe and akira seemed to know positively what had taken place even before the arrival of the steam launch with the news wished to see what had become of his uncle and brother but the japanese pointed out that fragments of the cliff were still falling and that it would be dangerous to venture as every hour or so the thunder of falling masses was heard dane considered that the advice was good and possessed his soul in patience until the dawn frequently during the night he lamented that he had not the searchlight of his own ship to see what extent of damage was done but of course such wishing was altogether vain as the mingo was large there was plenty of accommodation and the servants were persuaded to go below and sleep the women were very hysterical and the men greatly upset every one was devoted to the squire and hoped against hope that he had been saved but it was noticeable that no one troubled about theodore until that night basil had no idea how very unpopular his brother really was but he had not much time to think as the greater part of his time was spent in soothing patricia she felt the dreadful accident and its consequences much more than did mara that young lady neither wept nor expressed any great sorrow with a rigid face she stared into the gloom which veiled the home of her childhood and made scarcely any remark akira when harry came on board privately asked him if he thought that either colpster or his nephew had escaped i am certain they have not said pentreddle emphatically mr theodore was tied up and the last i saw of the squire he was at the window cursing me for taking away the mikado jewel ah oh, yes you brought that away with you akira held out his hand harry produced the jewel which he had thrust carelessly into his pocket after his glimpse of it on the launch they all fell on their faces he told the japanese akira smiled in a peculiar manner no wonder when they saw the might of the earth spirit what do you mean exactly sir asked the sailor quite puzzled the count handled the jewel reverently and producing a sandalwood box carefully wrapped up the emerald and its jade setting in fine silk before placing it therein i mean that this jewel holds the power of the earth spirit and pulled down the cliff on those who had to be punished was his remark as he locked the box and put it away safely is this the punishment you intended for mr theodore for murdering my mother asked pentreddle with a faltering voice yes are you not satisfied i thought you would have taken him on board and tortured him akira threw himself to his full height which was not very great still in his indignation he contrived to look quite imperial i am a japanese gentleman and do not torture any one i knew that the cliff would fall as soon as you left the house and that those behind would be crushed but how could you make the cliff fall persisted harry the earth spirit brought the fall about through its power stored in the jewel of go yojo do you understand no said the bluff sailor frankly bewildered well then i can explain no more you must take it that there was an accident owing to the late rains the earth fell for that reason but you are revenged on your enemy now tell me all that took place harry did not require much urging and related everything akira listened in silence hi said he when the tale was ended this poor wretch was ready to commit a second murder so much evil we have saved him have you the will he spoke of yes pentreddle produced it from his pocket but akira did not offer to take it in fact he refused to touch it give it to mr dane as you have been instructed 
i am glad to hear that he will inherit the property i have a great opinion of mr dane and a better one of the charming young lady he is going to marry i'll give it to him said pentreddle and now sir what is to become of me if you please well said akira quietly as you have restored the emerald you are no longer in danger i give you your life also and because you obeyed my instructions so implicitly you can have these and he produced ten notes of ten pounds each one hundred pounds my friend i couldn't touch them sir it would look as though i wanted to take money for avenging my poor mother's death that is very creditable to you pentreddle but i don't think you need decline you have been useful to me and deserve payment thus persuaded harry gladly took the notes but as he placed them in his pocket he observed gloomily that he thought theodore dane had died in too easy a manner akira shook his head and rebuked him my friend that mr dane broke the great law and when next he is born he will have to pay back to your mother all he owes her by wishing to torture him as you suggested to me you are only preparing trouble for yourself he has been partly punished leave him as to the rest to the great law what is the great law as you sow so shall you reap said akira quietly i have heard that before sir it is in your sacred book my friend but few of your people in the west understand its real meaning they think that the master who said it takes the reaping on his own shoulders while they sit in happiness and see it done akira shrugged his shoulders a great many of these foolish ones will be undeceived when their karma is ripe karma the count arose and shook his head we must not talk on these subjects as i am no priest he said with a smile all i tell you is that you must obey the great law or suffer according to your breaking of it now go and give the will to mr dane pentreddle did so and when questioned as to how it came into his possession related all that he knew and how he had brought back the will to its rightful owner patricia was present when he explained and both she and her lover were horrified to hear that theodore had murdered the poor woman they questioned and cross-questioned him until he was weary and excused himself so that he might get a little sleep but there was none for the young couple if theodore is indeed dead it is a mercy said basil thankfully oh dearest dead in his sin oh said the young man rather cynically if one had to wait until theodore from what i knew of him was fit to die he would have become immortal no darling he added quickly catching sight of patricia's pained face i don't mean to be flippant god have mercy on his soul i say with all my heart but he was a thoroughly bad man well he is dead so let us think no more about him so they said and so they felt but throughout that weary night they continued to talk of the scamp also they referred regretfully to the death of the squire and patricia wept for the old man who had been so kind to her in the end grief and anxiety wore her out and she fell asleep on basil's breast they sat in a sheltered corner of the deck for miss carroll refused to be parted from her lover in the grey grim light they finally saw the ruin which had been wrought by the fall of the mighty cliff there were vast rents in its breast and it was by no means so high as it had been below was a tumbled mass of red rock beneath which not only the hall but the greater part of the grounds were buried that which had been beckley was now a thing of the past for in no way could that enormous quantity of rubble and rock and sand and stone be lifted the whole formed a gigantic tumulus such as of yore had been heaped over the body of some barbarous chief squire colpster and his wicked nephew certainly had a magnificent monument to mark the place where they reposed amidst all that fallen rock it was impossible to rebuild the hall or to reconstruct the grounds we have the income said basil while he stood on deck with his arm round patricia's waist looking at the ruin but our home is gone for ever patricia shuddered i am sorry of course for it is such a lovely place 
was such a lovely place my dear yes yes but i always felt afraid when in the hall i felt certain that some day the cliff would fall it always seemed hostile to me it was only hostile to two people said the quiet voice of akira behind them the man who murdered for the sake of the emerald and the man who set in motion the causes which brought the emerald to beckley both have paid for their sins whatever do you mean count i shall tell you and dane when we go ashore said the japanese calmly in the meantime come down and have some breakfast you look faint miss carroll and it is time that you restored your strength go down and see my wife and she will look after you when patricia descended the companion akira turned to basil excuse me dane he said courteously but this fall of the cliff has robbed you of your home you will want money allow me to be your banker thank you but there is really no need said basil hastily i have five or six pounds in my pocket enough to take myself and miss carroll to london once we are there i shall see my uncle's lawyers about the will and get them to advance what i require but all these servants who are homeless they can go to their various relatives and friends i shall get the lawyers to send money for them don't be afraid akira i shan't neglect my people for they are mine now you know unless he cast a hopeful glance at the scarred face of the cliff no both the squire and your brother are dead they will lie under that mighty pile of earth to the end of time unless some high tide washes it away of course i mean their sheaths will their souls are now reaping according to the sowing come to breakfast basil descended and with patricia and the bridal couple had an excellent breakfast which was much needed it was useless to sorrow for the dead to the extent of starving for them for basil had seen very little of his uncle for many years and certainly had no cause to mourn for theodore as for mara she was as cool and composed as ever and ate so well that no one would ever have believed that she had just lost her father it is no use crying over spilt milk she said making use of her favourite proverb and although both her cousin and patricia considered that she was decidedly heartless they could not deny the good sense of the saying she invariably quoted as an excuse for her indifference but she was not sufficiently hard-hearted to remain behind although her feeling may have been merely one of curiosity for she came on deck cloaked and gloved and with her hat on ready to join the party akira promptly told her that he did not wish her to go and as his slightest wish was law to her she obeyed the yacht was to sail somewhere about noon so there would be no chance for basil and patricia to come on board again nor did they want to seeing that at present they had so much to think about so they said good-bye to the countess akira and departed along with the melancholy household that had now no home the launch took them ashore under what seemed an ironically sunny and blue sky after the late rains and storms it was cheerful to see the water of the bay sparkle in the sunlight but alas beckley was as ruined as ever was pompeii and in future the fairy bay would only be stretched out before a desolate scene patricia almost wept when she saw the ruin of the beauty spot not a vestige of the house was to be seen it was crushed flat under tons of red earth while nearly down to the water's edge great sandstone rocks and much rubble had smashed the trees and obliterated the flower-beds and over the gigantic heaps of debris the mighty cliff still soared rent and scarred although not to its original height early as the day was many people both men and women were moving amongst the rubbish seeing what they could pick up but there was absolutely nothing to be found the enormous fall of tons and tons of earth had pulverized beckley into dust it was like the ruins of a prehistoric world many people came down when they saw the approaching launch amongst them relatives of the servants together with friends these took charge of the homeless wanderers and gradually the whole household disappeared up the winding road to find shelter before they departed basil informed them that within a week he would return to handle and attend to their needs as he had inherited the property although the young man was a favorite 
the dispossessed were too miserable to raise a cheer and departed with sad faces and hanging heads their world was in ruins and save what they stood up in all were without money or home but the promise made by their new master that he would look after them cheered them not a little akira after he had walked round the desolation with basil and patricia asked them to return to the pier here he had seats brought up from the launch and they sat down to hear what he had to say his first speech rather surprised them used as they were becoming to the happening of the unexpected i am sorry that all this has occurred he said seriously waving his hand towards the ruins but i had to bring it about they looked at one another and then at the speaker believing and with some reason that he was crazy how could you possibly bring it about asked mr dane in a sceptical tone the mikado jewel brought it about oh patricia winced are you going to talk more of this occult nonsense can you call it nonsense in the face of this miss carroll that is an accident owing to the late rains quite so and that is what the world will consider it but i can tell you differently it happened because the mikado jewel was in the house it was not said basil imperatively and would have gone on talking but that patricia stopped him it was in the house she said quickly only mr colster poor man asked theodore and myself to say nothing about it basil cast a glance at the red heaps then it is buried under this rubbish he said disdainfully for all its occult power it couldn't look after itself i looked after it said akira quietly it is now on board the yacht and i am taking it back to japan to restore it to the temple of kitsuki how did you get it akira pentreddle by my desire took it from the squire when he went last night to accuse theodore your brother of murder he did not tell me that said basil involuntarily i asked him not to as i wished to tell you myself i am sorry to bore you with occult talk miss carroll but i think you would like to understand the reason for the jewel being at beckley at all you sent it to mr colster yes i did to punish him for daring to have it stolen from kitsuki but he didn't wish it stolen he was angry that harry should steal it akira waved his hand mr colster was the original cause of setting in motion the causes which led to mrs pentreddle's death to his own death and to that of his nephew he believed that the jewel would bring back luck instead of that it brought that and he pointed to the ruins basil looked helplessly at the speaker my dear fellow i am quite in the dark as to what you are talking about listen and i shall explain something of what i tell you has been told to you before but something i now tell you is new he drew a long breath and continued i don't expect you to believe all i say we'll try said basil ironically go on mr colster wished for the mikado jewel said akira deliberately and so he employed you dane to offer money for it mrs pentreddle heard from her late master that he intended to give the property to the nephew who brought back the jewel she hated theodore and loved you so as her son was going to japan she asked him to get the jewel in a way which he told mr colster but which i need not repeat he stole it and got away with it but he was followed and watched the priest of the temple told the government at tokyo and i was deputed to see if the jewel could be recovered i went to kitsuki and saved your life when you came to offer money for the gem and thank you for doing it akira said basil heartily all right i was only too pleased since the information you gave me about the emerald having been presented to one of your queens helped me to unravel the mystery several attempts were made to get the gem from pentreddle while he was in japan but all failed i therefore sent two men to watch for the arrival of his ship in london and followed myself i knew that i had made you my friend and intended to come to beckley if it was necessary when i arrived in london i found that pentreddle was trying to give the jewel to his mother and learned through his hanging round the house that the old lady was staying at the home of art in crook street 
and you had that watched i suppose of course replied akira serenely a man with a scar on his cheek who was an attendant in the temple of kitzuki watched that house then i learned where pentreddle was boarding in pimlico and my second man gained access to his room his letters which he left about were read and i learned that his mother intended to meet him at the serpentine in the way we know of i followed him when he went to keep the appointment what cried patricia was it you count who snatched the jewel from me yes i noticed that pentreddle passed you the box and followed you i fancied you would take the box home but you sat down to examine it it was the strange drawing power which made me open the box i wanted to see what caused the power i fear answered akira rather ironically that your curiosity was not gratified however as the power still radiated from the stone keeping off all things that would hurt it i reversed the power or rather stopped it altogether how did you manage that asked basil doubtfully akira shook his head i cannot tell you i dare not it is a secret and even if i did you would only laugh since you do not believe in these sort of things i knew the necessary mantra to say and said it he looked at patricia with a smile you felt the difference yes she nodded with a look of something like awe then you snatched it of course and the jewel being recovered i would then and there have taken it back to japan but for the murder of mrs pentreddle theodore did murder her then said basil in a low shamed voice oh yes and in the way her son told you my man with the scar saw the crime committed and secured the scarf as evidence with the name of your brother marked in the corner bad as theodore was said basil drawing a deep breath i am glad that you did not shame the family by denouncing him akira smiled at him in a friendly way of course you are my friend he observed also i wish to find young pentreddle i came down to beckley as you know and left instructions to my two men to send down the jewel to mr colpster but before leaving london i reversed the power but i don't see i do not expect you to see my dear man interrupted akira quickly but the jewel arrived with the power reversed yes patricia nodded again i felt it and she shivered well then akira glanced at his watch there is little more to tell i simply waited while the jewel did its work of loosening the cliff all the time it was in the house it was drawing those tons of earth down on the place i heard in the drawing-room that night that mr colpster was going to speak to pentreddle and pretended to go to bed instead of doing so i got out of the window and intercepted him on the winding road i then told him that i could prove who killed his mother and sent him to wait for my arrival in london he went the next morning i came on later and then i made my man with the scar tell him everything pentreddle left me with a full statement signed by my man and witnessed as your brother is dead and it is useless to make a scandal said akira glancing at basil i got that document from him last night and burned it dane leaned forward and shook the hand of the japanese i am greatly obliged to you he said with emotion why said akira in a friendly manner there is no reason that you should suffer for the sins of others that would not be fair besides i wish you to give miss carroll a clean name now then do you wish to know any more as i must up anchor and steam for the east how many people know that my brother committed this murder i do and my two men as we are going away for ever and will hold our tongues you need not fear us harry pentreddle will say nothing as he respects you and miss carroll too much besides i gave him one hundred pounds to get married on so when he is happy himself he will not wish to make others unhappy the squire was the only other person who knew and he is dead your name is quite safe thank god for that said basil reverently and took off his hat one question more said patricia rising what did you mean when you told me that you now knew why you had come to beckley it was because of mara explained akira gravely she was formerly a priestess 
in the temple of kitsuki and for some reason the spirit of the earth whose spell was on the emerald wished to bring her to my arms we had promised to love for seven lives you know for this reason the theft of the mikado jewel was permitted but for that pentreddle would have been kept back by the radiating power even i with no ill intent had to reverse or rather break the power before i could take the gem from you but then i know the spell and what is the power contained in the stone now akira hesitated i told you that the jewel was left on board he said but that was not true i brought it with me he produced the box from his pocket and took from it the jewel the great stone blazed with green lustre in the sunlight take it in your hands miss carroll patricia did so while basil looked at the gem curiously he had never seen it before suddenly patricia cried out with delight oh yes i feel the warmth and the light and the power streaming out from every petal imagination said basil impatiently and took the stone i can feel nothing of what you describe the count carefully replaced the jewel in its box you are not psychic i never wish to hear that word again said basil fervently i don't think you will replied akira dryly and slipped the box into his pocket well now i shall say good-bye and from japan i shall send you my wedding present be kind to-morrow said patricia imploringly be sure of that she is a sacred thing to me was she not the miko of kitsuki and did not the earth spirit bring her to my arms he changed his reverent tone for a matter-of-fact one good-bye dane akira held out his hand then suddenly drew it back there is one thing i should like to add so that you may guess that i am not in favour of killing innocent people i gave my entertainment so as to lure you dane and you miss carroll together with all your servants on board the yacht out of harm's way therefore mr colpster and the assassin were left to their fate alone in the house but pentreddle asked basil shuddering akira looked towards the winding road up which harry was slowly climbing i had to send him to get the jewel he remarked but i warned him of the danger and he escaped now that is all i have to tell he added quickly seeing that patricia was about to ask another question good-bye both of you once more they shook hands gravely all round then akira jumped into his launch and it steamed away in a great hurry as usual basil and patricia set their faces landward and picked their way over the loose rocks in a short time and walking above the grave of uncle and cousin they gained the clear space of the winding road here they came face to face with mrs lee who was toiling down all alone ha she said with a chuckle so it's you mr basil the old creature nodded i told him he would be crushed as flat as a pancake if he allowed it to come into the house he did like a silly fool and now he is buried under all that rubbish she pointed her staff disdainfully downwards who did you tell this to granny asked basil who knew her well to your brother theodore bless you dearie he often came to consult me i didn't like him though as he brought such bad ones with him what is the it you meant questioned patricia wondering if mrs lee had any knowledge of the fatal jewel it appeared that she had not ah lovey they didn't tell me that all i knew and all i told him was that it would crush him as flat as a pancake she looked at the tumbled red earth and chuckled maliciously <laughs> and it has dearie it has a grave for an emperor that is i don't believe these things granny said basil placing patricia's arm within his own here's a shilling bless you dearie may you never want bread croaked the old crone biting the shilling before tying it up in a corner of her apron then she faced them and waved a circle thrice which she crossed once the sign of power to bring you luck my dears she explained wagging her head but bless you both ye ain't wicked to the marrow as he was drat him i can see your future bright and fair her eyes became fixed as she spoke and she looked into the viewless air you'll both be happy all your lives for sorrow is ended and the debts of fate are paid money and children and rank and lots of good staunch friends 
all that you desire will come to you and the poor will bless you ever more so be it and let it be after which weird speech the old creature toddled down the hill with a senile laugh what do you make of that basil asked patricia when they reached the top of the winding road and came in sight of the carriage which was to take them to hendle railway station well said the young man reflectively after what has taken place i dare not disbelieve in many things i hope that what granny says will come true my dear basil amidst all his trouble turned to catch her in his arms i am sure that with such a darling as you are for my wife everything is entirely feasible and possible if the emerald of amyas colpster brought luck to no one it certainly has done so to me and now let us drive to hendle and catch the evening train to london to-morrow we must get married it seems heartless when your uncle is just dead sighed patricia but i have no home to go to and no one but you you shall stay at the home of art and when i marry you my dear mrs seller shall be the bridesmaid come my darling the sound of a gun stopped them before they could take a single step towards the new life which spread out so brightly before them they turned to see the miko standing out to sea with the black smoke pouring from her funnel as they waved their handkerchiefs the yacht dipped her ensign and fired a second gun then they saw her turn her nose seaward and steam direct for japan and the boat was carrying the mikado jewel after it had fulfilled its mission in the west back to its shrine in the temple of kitsuki in the province of izumo end of chapter twenty end of the mikado jewel by fergus hume